The transformer rectifier unit, TRU, is designed to provide backup power in the unlikely event that both DC generators have failed. Since 2021, it has been a normal procedure to keep it on during flight. Why, do you might wonder? Well, the answer might surprise you, so stay tuned. Hello aviators, how are you today? My name is Magnar Nordahl, I'm a captain and instructor on ATR aircraft. Today I will explain why we, on every flight, are using an electrical backup system called the TRU, Transformer Rectifying Unit. But before why we go into the reason for this procedure, I will explain what the TRU is and what it is designed to do. The main electrical system of an ATR is the DC electrical system. In the core, it has two batteries powering the most important systems that you need to fly the aircraft. The emergency battery and the main battery are connected to an emergency bus, essential bus and two standby buses, one DC and one AC via an inverter. Each engine drives a DC generator that also functions as a starter. Each generator powers a main bus, DC bus 1 and DC bus 2, plus some less important buses called the service bus and utility buses. DC bus 1 supplies inverter number 1 and charges the emergency battery. Likewise, DC bus 2 supplies inverter 2 and charges the main battery. The inverters supply the AC constant frequency buses. As long as at least one DC generator is working, the DC and AC systems are powered. But if both generators fail, we are down to battery power, and they will not last forever. This is a problem if you want to make long flights over water or isolated areas without any alternate airports nearby. ATA aircraft also have two AC generators with variable frequency. They are attached to the propeller gearbox, and because propeller RPM can vary, the AC frequency will vary. Therefore, the generators are called AC wild generators. Each generator drives an AC wild bus. More about that in a few moments. Until 1976, passenger aircraft with two engines had to be within 60 minutes flight time with one engine inoperative from an airport that was suitable for landing. This rule did not apply for airliners with three or four engines. Therefore, intercontinental routes were flown in wide-body airliners like the Lockheed TriStar, DC-10 and Boeing 747. But they were expensive to operate and many potential routes did not have enough passengers to make it economically viable to use such large aircraft. Then came the Airbus 300. Previous experience with high bypass engines in the before mentioned wide bodies show that those engines are very reliable. In 1977, the Airbus 300 was certified to what became known as ETOPS 90. ETOPS means extended range twin engine operations, and 90 means that the aircraft can operate up to 90 minutes at single engine speed from a suitable airport where you can land. Later, we got ETOPS 120, ETOPS 180, and so on. Today is the term ETOPS replaced by EDTO, Extended Diversion Time Operations, because they also include aircraft with more than two engines. And now we can talk about the TRU, the Transformer Rectifying Unit. It converts AC wild power into DC power. It is supplied by AC wild bus 2 and supplies DC power to the emergency bus, the essential bus and standby buses. So if we lose both DC generators, the TRU is selected on and we supply the important buses. The TRU allows for ATR aircraft to be certified for ETOPS 120 and that's why a TRU is installed in the aircraft. But why do we select it on before every flight then? The answer lies in this switch. On the 3rd of July 2020, 
an ATR-72-600 of Inkser with registrations Papa Kilo Whiskey Hotel Yankee on flight 3544 from Patimura Airport to Irarato Airport in Indonesia had just departed from Patimura when all display units went blank. The landing gear could not be selected up and both VHF radios were lost. This tells me that all these electrical buses were lost and that was critical because the crew had no information about their attitude, airspeed, altitude or engine power. Thankfully it was daylight. It was raining and the visibility was 6 kilometers. The captain who was pilot flying was able to maintain visual reference to the ground, but the situation was not so good. What is not written in the preliminary report is that the captain selected the battery toggle switch off and then on, and shortly after the radios and the display units came back. When passing 3000 feet, the crew was able to retract the landing gear and flaps and resume normal flight. After some uh, timing holding due to poor visibility, the aircraft landed safely back in Patimura. And my kudos to the crew, they did a very good job. This and a similar incident have been reported to ATR. ATR opened an investigation and they identified the battery toggle switch, 7PA and a contactor called 1PA as potential culprits. Consequently, ATR issued an airworthiness directive and informed all operators that normal procedures and checklists have been modified to activate the transformer rectifier unit, TRU, before taxi and deactivate it after landing. This will prevent a similar incident from happening, as power to the most important DC buses will be routed around the battery toggle switch. A new switch and contactor have been designed and are undergoing testing. And when approved, they will be installed in all aircraft. So there we are. The TRU was designed to allow for ATR to be approved for ETOPS. But it ended up preventing all ATR 600 from being grounded after the two incidents. ATR has announced that all aircraft will receive the updated parts within 2024 and after that the use of the TRU on every flight will be a memory. Thank you for watching, have a wonderful day and happy learning.